is up everybody a little about a lot today we're gonna discuss a little bit about the shade cell there's definitely some interest on design what kind of material and all that kind of stuff so let's cover that and go over the good the bad and the ugly of having a shade cell so here it is guys shade cells there's a reason they're not up right now so we've had the shade cell for about maybe a little over two months now since I made the video if you haven't checked that out please check that one out and we've had to take it up and down 15 20 times and as you can see it's not up right now and here's reason why it's on the ground torn up from a storm we just had everything was going really really good until yesterday when a huge storm came through and just ripped this thing apart I was at a friend's house helping him out with a project and this freak storm come through and so typically what we do is we take this shade cell down when winds are about 20 plus miles an hour or if we're expecting a big heavy rainfall the shade has been incredibly awesome it gives it a great atmosphere out here we wouldn't be out here very many times unless we had this shade cell because when it gets 90 degrees you need some shade the way we've been hanging this is having three high points and one low point over here where i have this one this eye bolt here it's where we have been keeping it about 90 percent of the time like i said if we expect a big storm or some wind to come through, we'll take it down uh, just to keep the stress off the gutters and things like that that I installed it through. And so when we had that big storm yesterday, when I'm talking like 60 mile an hour winds and like three plus inches of rain in just easily an hour or so, what ended up happening is that the wind got really bad and that the bolt that was going through the gutter into the rafter here pulled straight out. As you can see, it just completely ripped the shade sail here not even along a seam it just ripped it right across there and I found that bolt it pulled out so hard it came off and it came all the way down to right there we have tried on a couple different occasions to have it high up here high up here low down there and low down here and that didn't work either Shade cells need a bunch of tension to make them nice and tight. And it's very important to make them nice and tight. Because if not, they flap really bad. The bigger the shade cell, the more height dimension you're going to need. And the tighter it's going to need to be. And more support that you're going to need to have. A small shade cell, which I can do probably four small 8x16s here. Instead of four, instead of two 16x16s. And that may be part of, the, part of a solution too. But they bow. And when they do, it collects water, if it's one of those waterproof ones. The issue that I've always had from the very, very beginning is not necessarily the design of this. Though, when building a shade cell, you do need definitely to have extra supports to make sure everything is connected and you don't have any weak areas. I had a weak area with the post over here. It was leaning in just from the tension of the shade cell, fixed out with this support beam and that worked really great and then we had another issue with the rainwater as it would rain really bad the wind would push that shade cell down and it just took that much time for that rain to fill up a little void right there and then it would sink that shade cell and because this shade cell was waterproof it would collect that water then it would put 400 pounds of water you know 50 gallons of water sitting in that thing and it would stretch it out so do I think my design was really bad no. Do I think it could be executed a little bit better? Yes. I might end up doing triangle shade cells, which would put tension in a little different areas, and it wouldn't be so big. It allows some air to go through, and I don't think that it will pull as bad on those as it would with these other ones. One of the solutions that I'm thinking about doing is getting one of those permeable shade cells, the ones that allow water to go through, and even some of the higher winds to go through it as well. Hanging the shade cell at different levels definitely, definitely helps with wind and rain and everything like that. So you don't want to have it all on one level. Which brings me to another issue that I had with it is that when putting this up, and even though I tighten them really hard, tight with the turnbuckles, I could never get the shade cell 100% tight. It's because these shade cells were so big, they acted kind of like a sail. These were 16 foot by 16 foot waterproof shade cells that I got from Amazon. I'm not sure exactly what type of material they were, but everything was going really, really good until the other day. But all in all, I'm thinking that a permanent structure may be the way to go. 
So I think the eye bolts worked out great. I think the chain weight was perfect because that didn't even break. I think the turnbuckles were great. I think the 4x6s work as long as you have extra support. I think everything was pretty good. The design just lacked just a little bit of expertise as in how tight I could get that shade sail. Seemed like the tighter I can get it, the better it worked and the more it shedded water and the better it reacted in the wind. Mine is just one example of some issues that I had. You may not be having these issues. Mother Nature will always win. I think shade sails are really awesome. Do they require some maintenance? Sure. Do they get stained because a bird poops on it? Sure. Would I do it again? I would. This is a great learning experience and I think if you had a smaller shade sail or able to get it tight all the way across, I'm not sure if it was the manufacturer that I just couldn't get it all the way across or maybe there wasn't enough connection points that I wasn't able to get it across or maybe I just did something wrong or maybe I just wasn't given enough height difference. Maybe I, you know, this is about it's about a four foot drop from up there to down here. And so maybe I just wasn't giving it enough. Maybe three high ones and one low one wasn't good enough. But when it rained, just when it just did a normal typical rain, it was okay. But when we had really, really heavy rains, it didn't do very well. Don't worry guys, this is just a little DIY project that I ended up putting up. It didn't cost a whole lot of money. It didn't take a lot, a lot of time to do this. And it was trial and error. And so I learned out of it. It's okay to make a mistake. I'm going to rebuild this thing. and we'll make it even better than it was the previous time. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one.